Welcome back to Trends in World here, and we have got a fun one today. The Canadian DLC is here, the Oakville subdivision, and I'm very excited because not only do I have something to tell you all, which we'll tell you on the train, but I really love Canadian trains. Yeah. So, we're going to hop aboard our GP38 here, Canadian National. Hello, Mr. Engineer. You're going to be useless as, as ever. Let's get ourselves set up to run here. So we need to set our systems to on. It's raining, so we'll put on a little bit of wiper. Pretty sure the reverse handle's in. Wrong one. There we go. And we will set ourselves to freight. Turn the automatic off. And we're good to go. Release released, so. We will set ourselves going. If the train wants to leave here. So, yes, this is the Oakville subdivision, the latest DLC from Dovetail Games and Trends in World. And it is entirely Canadian, featuring both the GP38-2 and the GP9N, which is the low-nose variant of the GP9, rather than the classic high hood. And I do have something to tell you all. Something I've been hiding quite badly for the last while. I like trains. I'm a sim fan, yes, and I love sim games in general, but I don't know what it is, but I quite like trains. I find them fun. I don't know why, but they're cool. Um, I actually have a model railway. Yes, it's small. It's N-gauge or N-scale in American. Um, I have a bay window in my office and it occupies the bay window. It's about a meter and a half long by maybe 80-ish centimeters deep. But it is a small operating N-scale layout with industrial sidings and a full loop that goes into the back area so you can't quite see the whole thing so it's more of an American style layout and it is North American slash Canadian themed technically for me it's just over the border in Ontario it's the general theme of the place so some CSX operates there and mostly CN Canadian National these bad boys as we go through the train station get an awful camera angle that's nice of it but Yes, I am a train nerd. I know far more about trains than I let on in these videos. In fact, I've been trying to act coy and like I don't know anything. So, this is my great coming out story. My great truth telling of liking trains. And I probably shouldn't feel quite as... Come on, engine, let's go. I'm about down to 15 anyway shortly, but at the same time, we might as well get ourselves up speed a little bit more. Um, I think it stems back to my father growing up who had a model railway from the youngest age I can imagine. He had a model railway in first the kind of outbuilding slash garage we had at our old house and then later on in the attic at our newer house. And it was a big layout. It was a yeah, double main line. Um, his preference was steam era so British early steam uh, not early steam, kind of the heyday of steam, the Flying Scotsman, the Mallard. Um, you dabble as a child. And I think it set something in my mind. And a couple of years ago, I wanted to do something to remember him. So I made a small diorama, something that was originally going to be used for a trench scene in a World War One diorama, became a small valley, which got turned into a valley with a bridge across it and a small section of rail. And I wanted a small train to put on there, so I got an N-scale train. 
I think we're coming off this line here. We are. This is the main, so it's got automatic switches. There's a freight train up ahead there who's waiting to come onto this main. But that one train and two little carriages for the diorama became, well, I'd love to see these move. And so I had a first attempt at a layout, which was not great, but it was okay. And I used what I learned from that to make my second one. And I really enjoyed it. It was, it was a lot of fun. And I learned a lot about trains in the process. And I, I don't know, I find them fascinating, especially the American and North American freight industries. They're kind of action-packed. There's a lot of big stuff going on. And I find it quite raw and interesting. So as we're heading now down this industrial branch to go pick up our coaches, make sure we're actually clearing this crossing as we should be doing. Keep our bell operating as we're in these industrial segments and we need to drop the speed down. Should be our independent seeing as we're not operating as a local well, the independence is just this locomotive whereas the automatic is the entire lash up. So these two locomotives here. Drop the speed down here so we don't pick up pace. We are on a slight downgrade. So we should be sidling on in here. Our job today is to pick up a string of newly manufactured tank cars. We're pulling them back to a uh, loading station to fill them and test them. So we'll get to play with the new loading mechanism in Trains in World for tank cars. Something the other versions haven't had. A new type of freight. I was going to put 5% independent on to try and keep myself below speed here. But... We are not too far away. Let's check the map. So it's nine for the map. And I do believe I understand. This is where we're heading to here, which is just over there. See those gantries? This is where we're bringing the uh, carriages back to, and we'll be testing them. No, wrong button. That's eight, nine. So. We're heading along here. Our job is to head up here. So we're set for the right track there. We're on the right track there. I don't think it's given us our waypoint yet, but... Oh no, it wants us to be here. Then we will go here. I think we go past this segment here and we're up into here somewhere. This is probably where we're actually heading to. There we go, back in the cab. Well, she saw what's going on now. We just abandoned our train for a second. Not a big deal. I like it, it's to kind of fly by camera. What's kind of atmospheric? But now. And it wouldn't be one of my wonderful trains and videos if I didn't climb out of the cab and go and do some silly things. So let's go do it. Screw you, engineer, I know what I'm doing. Titanic moment. Everyone's got to have one. I'm not going to be stupid enough to climb onto the uh, second locomotive at this point, though. I'm running on brake on some level ground, so that's not going to benefit us here. One thing that's been newly introduced or recently introduced to the Transim World line is. Um, track unevenness. You'll notice here how the cab is wobbling around and shaking. Well, locomotives tend to move around an awful lot, especially because track isn't always level, nor does it stay level. So you should see here... I don't know if you can see or not, but... Yeah, we're shaking and wobbling on the tracks. the grade crossing here. Poor houses being so close to train tracks hearing all this racket, but we are entering an industrial part of town, so it shouldn't matter too much. Either way, uh, more crossings, and we are at relatively slow speed. We can stop fairly quickly here. Hence why the speed is 15 miles an hour helps to allow the trains to actually stop in a timely manner should they have to. 
I've got to say, my computer upgrades have made Trains in World run so much better recently. Uh, so I'm basically able to get 60 FPS at all times, even with everything turned up to full. And it is really pretty. I like it. Um, I do have the latest version of Train Sim itself, and I will be reinstalling that because someone got me some DLC for it. Whether or not I will record videos on Train Sim itself, I'm not sure, but I would like to. Um, just something I'm hoping to do some more of. I really kind of avoided the topic of trains, or whilst I played this, I kind of passed it off as a, hey, I like Sim games, and I'm going to play this because I quite like Sim games, and it's a useful skill in the zombie apocalypse, and while that's true, I do just like it. I know that's weird, and there aren't many female train fans out there, but I really kind of find it fun. To me, it's interesting and different, and it's something, especially with Transit World, there's definitely a roleplay element to it, and we all know I love that, so. Okay, so we're coming up on our main line intersection here. Where we'll get our next routing location. This is Birmingham Yard Crossing. What we will likely do here is we will skip forwards in time until we arrive at the tank cars. So you'll get to watch everything just a little bit further out. So we're arriving now at uh, Kenilworth Avenue. I just need to put some brakes on here as we are on a bit of a downgrade. And we're we'll gaining speed, sorry. And we need to stop here. So we're about to pick up our new cars. I should have set all the sidings the correct way already for us. So cruising to a stop here at the entrance of the yard. I should have all of the points set up right because I actually worked out how to do that now. Um, we should be ready to go here. So we'll stop where it tells us to. We're not going too fast, so it's actually relatively quick to stop here. And we'll apply the brakes. Perfect stop. Okay, so, a couple to the cut of tanks. We should be all lined up ready for those, so it's time to get going. An unnecessary stop, but one we'll do anyway. Because theoretically, somebody may not have set those stops already. So we'll get those going again. Up here you'll see we're cutting to that line of tanks that's just in the middle there, between the green hoppers. I should have lined us correctly for this, so we'll just mosey on in at about 10 miles an hour. And I am not lined for the right track, because I have been special. I could have sworn I said that already. That's a, that's a rip track. Uh, okay, so. Back up, because I did a stupid. Here's me thinking I'd said everything correctly. It must have reset it whilst I wasn't looking. Let's 
get ourselves back behind the switch here. Which is this one. So once we're behind that one, the rear low coaster is passing now. We'll be able to stop and line ourselves for the correct track. Okay, and we are clear. Brakes on. Nine. So we want to be on this track here. So we're going here. And then on here. And then on there. Brakes off. Let's give it some gas. And this should line us perfectly. Now I'm less stupid and wasting more and more time. Just make sure we're not going too quickly here, otherwise this will be a bit of a uh, Pan Am Railways coupling again. Don't want to repeat that incident. Pan Am Railways is a New England railroad company. And I've done it again. How have I done this again? Really? The map lies to me. I was lying for the correct track, it said. It lied. Right, let's throw it behind this switch and... I'm doing this one myself. Screw it. I don't trust you, map. There we go. That's line for the tank cars. We'll be getting off here shortly to switch to the other cab, so I won't bother closing the door. So the brake off. Let's give it some gas. And we'll get ourselves moving here. There we go. Let's noodle our way on in here. Yep, this should be us off that lane now onto the tank cars, so we'll put some brakes on here. We don't want to slam into these guys. Yeah, Pan Am's a New England railroad. They're a bit like Swift in the, in the trucking world, and they're a little bit special. Still a fairly Pan Am coupling. We'll go with that one. So, automatic handbrake to handle off, which is beyond emergency. Reverse it to neutral. That's the throttle. Handle out, brake to cut off, and to trail for our ME valve. Trail 6 or 26. First handles already out. So we'll switch to our other unit, which is now our head unit. And we now have a coupled line of five or six tank cars. So we'll switch up here. And we'll run now back towards where we were at the sorting yard. So let's get the handle in there, let's get our systems turned on. Automatic to release. We want to be in freight. It's already in, thank you game. I'm too goddamn efficient. Let's get it rolling. Give it a bit more gas since we've got to get this thing out of here. I believe we have got uh, five tank cars, five brand new tank cars here that are going to go and be pressure tested and filled, so we'll get that done. All the lines should be set for us on the way out of here since we just left, so we'll give it a bit more throttle to try and get ourselves moving on our wonderful 50 mile an hour trip. Now, I wanted to get this done because um, Dovetail Games very generously 
gave me a copy of this DLC and I really, really wanted to play this and I, with craziness recently, I've been a little bit behind in what I've been trying to do, so I wanted to get this out because I'm actually impressed. I love where Trends in World is going. I love what it's doing with the game. Um, for me, it's much more engaging than Train Sim itself. Not that much more, but I find it a lot more exciting with the on-foot elements. And the scenarios are great fun. I enjoy how they actually script them and set them up to be interesting missions, as well as the regular scheduled operations you can conduct. And it's a DLC like this, which is something I've been crying out for. Something that's more set around industrial work and switching which to me is what I find interesting in railroading. I love the industrial switching, I love yard work. To me that's the fun, because you actually get to do things rather than sitting behind the throttle and, well, monitoring your speed for a two and a half hour journey down a main line in a big six axle Jeevo or something, just hauling something from A to B. Yeah, that's railroading. It's one of the biggest parts of railroading, but to me, playing a video game I like the more technically challenging aspects, and I haven't actually turned on the wipers in this cab yet, so... We'll do that, keep our windows clear. So we have a bit of a run back here now to the tank yard, so... We will let that do that, and I'll meet you once we get there. Okay, so we're arriving at the Victoria Avenue facility here. We're about 900 yards out, and our downgrade is definitely helping with the speed here. So we need to keep some brake on this thing. In fact, I'm going to switch off my independent onto my automatic to make sure we give it a hint of initial reduction. We don't want to give it too much. Otherwise, it will, uh, you know what, actually, Independent feels like a good choice because it allows us to put a little bit of slowdown on without it affecting the whole locomotive and train. But we're arriving at the yard here. I should have our siding set for us now. We'll pull the train into the siding. We'll decouple. We'll run around the, locomot uh, the locomotives around the actual string. And then we'll shunt them into the loading facility. Which should be nice and simple. I'm going to make sure I line up the actual gantries for loading with the Pop it, well, nozzle? Hatch? Yeah, the hatch. We'll land up the gantries with the hatches once we actually get here, so. We're 500 yards now from the siding itself. It's a good little run around loop here, so we can just unhook, run past, and then get behind us and push ourselves in. grade has changed here so we do need a bit of gas to get ourselves moving 15 miles an hour is not a lot to slow down from so we should be just fine still pity all these houses because we'll definitely have to do a lot of accelerating locomotives around here and braking especially up here where you've got the, uh, the switch all right this should be lined for us now
it looks that way. I can see the fork sticking out, so we're lined for the right track. Siding a little quickly, but we'll be alright. Okay. So we'll stop where it tells us to, and we will decouple. Apparently with our asses hanging over the crossing. Not the end of the world, but we kind of need to with the length of us. Service brakes applied. Bring ourselves to a stop here. Allow ourselves to roll a little bit. Hopefully meet this objective marker. Come on, underneath we go. And we're stopped. So, we'll hop out of here. Run round to our tank cars. We'll uncouple those. And we're sitting across the crossing, of course. Okay, that's uncoupled. So we'll run ourselves around and we will get in position to push rather than pull. Right, so automatic brake off. Let's give it some welly. Let's get ourselves around the other end of this locomotive or train even. Let's get our locomotives around the other end of the train. It's freezing matters. So we're sided for the run around loop here. So get ourselves to this point in 400 yards where I will decelerate because I'm going way too fast. Come on, slow down. I mean, I'm on time. I'm early, maybe? I don't know. We're trying our hardest here to be as efficient as possible. Anyway, we are going to hop around here, stop, set ourselves back for the main. I'm going to use the map to actually change my switches because I'm pretending the lazy ass who's meant to be in my seat over there is getting out and doing it for me. Because in real life, the conductor throws the switches and the engineer stays in the cab. Of course, in those contexts, you have three-point protection set with brakes uh, versus its neutral handles applied and things. That way, it's safe for people to work between the locomotives. But in this context, it's a game, and I'm pretty positive it's not going to move because I'm not in the seat. And annoyingly, the game won't let me drive when I've got power applied. I've tried to do runaway trains before. It doesn't like it. Okay, let's bring ourselves to a stop here. Okay, and let's throw it in reverse and flip it and reverse it. Here we go. Get ourselves backed up here and we'll get behind our string of tank cars and we'll push them into the loading area which is just here see those nozzles on the stands that's what we'll be working with in a minute so there's our string that's no, not our string that's uh, the two that were already in the siding where's the rear wipers our string of cars will be coming up in our window in just a second. You'll see them just off the side of the train. Once we clear the point into the, or the switch that leads into the loading area. Unless they've run away, that could be awkward. And I might get in trouble. Oh no, here they come. There's the round edge of a tank. So we'll get behind this line of cars and we will push them into the loading area. Then we'll commence the manual loading operation, which is actually kind of fun because you actually have to load the cars yourself from the ground. Another reason why I lo love Trains in World. You actually get to do stuff around the place rather than just, you know, pulling up and letting it happen. You know, you actually get to be involved and it feels kind of interesting. It's not that realistic, but it works. It does the job, you know, it gives you that sense of completionism. So here's our string now. We'll get behind these bad boys. We'll throw the switch and we'll push them in. 
And I can't believe I just referred to a string of tank cars as bad boys. Because they're not. Here's the crossing we're just driving across right now whilst we're blocking the road. But this happens in real life industrial switching. Sometimes a crossing may be blocked for like 5-10 minutes whilst locomotives run around or set up and get ready to actually work them. So, get our brakes going here. As soon as we see the switch head, we'll stop the locomotive. We'll go to here. We'll set the track ahead of us for the right one. And we'll go forwards. Nice slow speed coupling here. We don't want to panam these things and destroy the tank cars early. Especially not as soon as they're loaded. That would be a problem. I like the little touch, by the way, the cabin here of the... I don't know whether it's Tipex or just white pen for the controls that have wiped off. I like that. You know, it's a nice little kind of... Oof, that was a bit of a Pan Am coupling. <laughs> we hopped. A little fast. But we have got ditch lights on Canadian trains, so that's a fun one. We'll turn this off, they are annoyingly distracting. Those ditch lights are those two, by the way. Those two the ones on the uh, heading area. Okay, let's get ourselves ready here. We are coming in pretty quickly. Let's make sure we line this up properly. We should be able to do it from the cab, but we'll do it from exterior view just so you guys can see what's going on. So let's bring them into the loading area now, and we will pull up here to the gantry section. Come on. A gradient just heavy. They are about to be even heavier. Okay. So don't want any more throttle here. We're just going to bring these to a nice gentle stop. We'll pretend the conductor's riding on the back one and get a guiding us in. Have some brakes here. We'll maintain our speed for now. And we will cruise till we have line up on the gantry. Stop. Oh man, that was perfect. We nailed that. Let's leave the brakes on. Actually, we'll put the train brakes on. Full service. And we'll knock the independence off. Okay, so. Time to fill some tank cars. With our perfectly lined up, nailed it parking. Okay, so we flip the control panel on. We hop onto the tank car, we open the loading hatch, we grab the nozzle for the ethanol and we attach it. We then get on here and we open the pump valve and then we do this to every other car for our loading procedures. Oh yeah, I had to get on here first. Obviously, in real life, we'd have to be undoing those bolts on the actual top. Wouldn't just be a simple case of, hey, they all just flop open. See, those bolts, they'd have to be unscrewed. They probably have a wrench, an air gun or something to do it. But that's another one filling there. And... One more. I like the actual involvement of the player here as an actual kind of on the ground worker. I think it adds to the whole experience of working with locomotives and working with trains. It's part of the industrial experience and you know we're filling our 
tank cars here with ethanol. So we'll run back to the start now. Oh, we need to secure the trim. We never actually set ourselves to neutral, so we've just been doing this automatically without it telling us to. But we followed the correct procedure, so we're good. Whoopsie doodles. Forgot to set us to neutral. Three points of protection and all that. Well, we've already done the loading, so we're all good. We're ahead of schedule. Ha! It's already attached. Okay, so we're skipped ahead to the detached phase. We'll switch this off. I'm going to do this to all of them and we will be Dunzo Washington. Go on, go away over there. Thank you. Once it's done, we swing it out of the way. So, pump valve closed. Climb on the tank car. Disconnect. Secure the hatch. And master off. Swing the gantry out of the way. Off you come. Get out of the way. All the cars now test looks like they're good to enter service. Good work. We did our job, but we didn't blow up the world. Yeah, seems we now have five loaded tank cars full of ethanol that that were being tested. So this was me as a crash test dummy, apparently, and we didn't know whether it would work or not. Can I do this? No, I can't jump on there. I'd love to ride up here like Denzel Washington in uh, Unstoppable. That'd be great. Well, we did a good one, folks. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm a train fan. Bye.